Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again on Itamar. Today we are just about ready to enter the seventh day of Passover. As we all know, the great miracle that occurred of the splitting of the Red Sea. And this Passover was very unique in that, you know, literally, we feel, literally, I think we feel as a nation today in Israel that we're sort of surrounded, you know, we're surrounded like we're running away from Egypt, and we have the Egyptians behind us, and, and the front of us is the sea, and what's going to be? How are we going to, where are we going to? But miraculously, the, the sea split, and Israel was able to cross in, on dry land and reach the other side where the Egyptians were flooded out, putting it simply. And, and today is literally the, the feeling that history repeating itself on a situation where it's, it's, you know, who would ever believe in our lifetime and to see the vision of our prophets and our sages um, coming true today. I mean, literally, numerous times, the Bible hints to the nations coming against Israel. And we have no one to rely on, but God is telling us to rely on Him at the end of the day. And that's exactly the stage we're in right now. Um... If we look again, the things that have been literally taking place now in, in the United States and other places in the world, in the universities like Columbia, where a huge wave of anti-Semitism threatens the, the Jewish um, students and the faculty in different universities. And then we have, um, at the same time, the threats of, of the court in Hague to put out arrest warrants for um, the political leadership of Israel. I mean, things are not to be fathomed. I mean, this is really literally ganging up from all sides. People forgot that instead of standing with Israel and fighting against evil that literally threatens not only Israel as a country that went on a rampage of rape and murder and mutilation in October 7th, but this wave of, of, of hostile hostility, of, of radical Muslim behavior, is threatening the entire world um, as well. And it will come eventually reach everyone's doorstep if something is not done about it. But Israel is fighting back. And instead of saying bravo to Israel and allowing Israel to finish the job, constant pressure stopping us here, stopping us at the doorsteps of Rafa, when Israel could finish basically gaining total control of, of Gaza, and stopping the um, Hamas from being able to regain control and leadership where they'll just try to go on another rampage, another rampage. I mean, the feeling today is literally the seventh day of Passover, as we we're just about to enter in a short time, is the feeling that we, are, we have nowhere to go, right? On one hand, of course, we're people of faith and, and we're not afraid, but that's the feeling that existed when Israel was running away from Egypt the Egyptians will be from, from behind in the sea in the front. And what allowed us to go and to, for the Red Sea to split was our tremendous faith in God. And realizing that at the end of the day, the eternity of the people of Israel will overcome any obstacle. Nothing will ever stand in the way of Israel's eternity as a nation. And that is what our rabbis say that what a shivcham alayam, what a maidservant on the sea saw on that great moment of the splitting of the Red Sea was something that even great prophets Ezekiel did not, was not able to see. In other words, the spiritual level that was reached at the sea at the height of, our, of the miracles, which, which literally um, was a cherry on the cake of the, split, of the Red Sea splitting, was a level where even the maidservant was able to see in such clarity. And what did she see? Rav Chalab, one of the great masters of, of in, um, in um, Torah, in the 1800s, early 1900s, um, he was a student of Rav Kook. And he wrote an essay called, well, he wrote a book, many books, one of his books on his essays are called Mei Mei Rome the waters of Meirom of above. And he writes about, he talks about how the seventh day of Passover 
represents a situation that sometimes people are able to um, connect olamam, they're able to literally be deserving of the world in one moment. In one moment. What does that mean? You know, people, most people, it takes many years of, 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 of struggle and study and, and working hard to achieve great, great achievements in their life. You know, and, and especially in spirituality is a long road of, of work. But Brother Rav Chalab says something very interesting. Sometimes we have people that literally are able to achieve, literally, to acquire the world in one moment. And that is based on stories in the Talmud and Abu Dazara, um, a very famous story. I'm not going to go to tell the story now. But, but we see sometimes people are able to make a life change. In one moment, the, the whole life is, tur- is turned around. In one moment. And that inspiration that took place at the Red Sea when, when we were literally in a checkmate. And all of a sudden, everything turned around for the better and, and we were saved in that situation. That caused an enlightenment, tremendous enlightenment, that people were able to literally acquire the world in one moment. They realized that faith was so powerful and they saw that they were totally... Um, totally connected to the to divine at that moment, and they saw the divine influence of how God literally is intervening on their behalf. That is is something that we feel literally living here in Israel. Um, we feel that this is the hour, this is the moment that's coming that we will literally acquire our world in one moment. We will connect to that great moment of faith when we will see tremendous things taking place soon. And this is the feeling now. When literally we're, we're, we're in, a, in a war of checkmate, we're surrounded, it's almost checkmate. It seems like people are, you know, people who without faith are losing their minds, what's going to be, and, and having all kinds of um, doubts about the future. But someone who's strong in their faith knows that we will persevere and God will show us the way. And that is the seventh day of Passover. Seventh day of Passover is the... It is, you know, literally, the ceiling is like the finale is the greatest part of the holiday. We are just about ready to enter that seventh day of Passover where we will connect to the great moment where God will show His face to us and we will be revealing again, will be revealing again to us His face and we will be, we'll come out with flying colors and we'll see a tremendous upliftment. We will witness, God willing, a witness, just like the, the servant on the sea, we will to see things that no prophets ever saw before. We're really looking forward for this great, this great moment of Masherata Shifcha Yam Lora'a Yechezkel Ben Buzi, where a maid servant on the sea did not see the prophet Ezekiel. That great message of realizing that, that we can overcome any obstacle, and that God is going to be with us. That's the lesson we have to take out of the splitting of the Red Sea and bring it into our hearts and believe it with all our hearts and souls. And we could look back. Rav Chalab said something fascinating. He's saying we saw that when God told Lot, when he was destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities, right, they, weren't able to, they weren't supposed to look back and watch the destruction. But his wife became a pillar of salt. She looked back. But here on the sea... All of Israel saw what God did to the Egyptians and how they all totally were swallowed up in the sea. And there we weren't, we didn't have the prohibition of looking back. And why? Why wasn't, why didn't we have that prohibition? Why were we able to look at that? And the answer he gives Rav Chab, a beautiful answer, is that because that is exactly what we opened up with. The acquisition of their the acquisition of their world in one moment. The rising to such a high spiritual level. It wasn't a situation where in the merit of someone else you were saved like Lot was saved in the merit of Abraham, but in their own merit, their hearts were opened up totally and realized that we have no one to rely on but the, but the king of the universe. God is going to reach out his hand of love and kindness. and He's going to literally bring salvation to his people. And this is what we're looking forward and seeing, and God willing, let us hold tightly, hold tightly onto our chairs. Great things are coming. So I want to wish you all a beautiful Chag Sameach, a beautiful, happy Passover. 
and should be, again, we should witness great miracles, and Israel will rise forward, and its great destiny is being a light to the nations, and restoring holiness to the land, for, to, be, to awaken all of mankind to the truth of God in the world, and this way we will bring peace and tranquility, and it will be the end of all the evil forces. Have a beautiful Chag Sameach. Shalom, shalom.